truly a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this beautiful morning and a little cool fall morning in the air and the air conditioning is on and uh, it's set up way high, uh, like like 65 high, no, but uh, <laughs> Miss Lois told me a while ago she was sweating and uh, just joking, but uh, truly a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. I'm excited what God is going to continue to do and, and what he is already doing and uh, we want to go over a few announcements uh, don't forget our Sunday school has started. We have a youth class and we have an adult class uh, as of right now. Uh, it's starting at 10 o'clock. We had to bump it back because we didn't have enough time. So we're just going to start on normal time at 10 o'clock uh, for the month of October as far as we know until uh, the, the virus kind of goes down and numbers kind of go back. Then we'll start trying to go back into different phases and pray for us and, and the deacons and leaders of the church as we try to stay safe and make the best decision for what God has called us to do. Uh, I want to go over a few announcements. Um, we are planning to do our clothing giveaway um, on Halloween, October 31st this, this year. Uh, coming up soon, we have been blessed with an abundance of clothes and still taking donations. Um, we're going to start sorting those as soon as we can. Um, so if you will uh, maybe get a chance to come out, I think Amanda's going to try to get some organizations started, at least starting to get ahead of the game until until other times. I think we're going to start sorting in the fellowship hall uh, some of the clothing and stuff. So uh, she'll try to get uh, that figured out and sorted out. And that way, if you just got any kind of downtime or you want to come and sort and organize, that would be truly a blessing. So that will be getting told as well where we're going to put them until we have the giveaway for the 31st. But that will be taking place in the fellowship hall and maybe some of the Sunday school classrooms as well. Uh, so that will be truly a blessing. We do our free clothing giveaway for all sizes, plus we get to do some uh, back-to-school items and things like that, so that's coming up. Um, also, Miss um, Maribel wanted me to thank the church for praying for Chris Bolton, who's had surgery uh, this week and done really well with it. He's going to be in the hospital probably for the next few weeks, uh, so continue to pray for him and pray God uh, to change and use him uh, during his time, and uh, he had actually said that he was... This was going to be a changing time in his life for the good. So uh, we're praying that this can help him uh, through this time. I uh, do remember all those who are, are still a part of the, uh, the COVID-19 that's being affected by that. Pray for our president and his wife. Um, somebody else with a prayer request or praise before the church this morning? Just remember that. All right. We've been having, having visitors all morning. I think I heard the bird hit the glass back there. So, so the preacher stops in the message. We just might open the door and just say, "Come on in," right? And that'd make it. That'd really have a live. It'd kind of be like the the church church squirrel song, right? And the bird come in flying in and had a good church service. But uh, it's truly a blessing. Um, I remember the first month when we moved into this church building, we would have birds that just would hover out the back window for about the first month. It was just beautiful and uh, truly a blessing. So anybody else prayer request or praise? Okay, young man. All right, remember that. A little young man having brain surgery. So remember that. Somebody else, prayer request or praise? All right. Unspoken prayer request, things on our hearts, on our minds. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll start our worship service and see what God has in store for us this morning. I'm super excited, and I hope you are too. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We just thank you for the sweet Sunday school hour we already have, and think about how we can praise you and how we can praise others for, for what, what you do in our life and what you're doing in others' lives. And God, there's many of those that are facing cancers and surgeries and uh, Lord, just recovery, uh, recovering from all these things and many of those facing this virus and those that's working in harm's way every day and people that sometimes go unnoticed, God, but you know us all better than ourselves. And I just pray right now that you will be with our church service here this morning. Be with the singing. Be with the preached word. Just use me as your messenger and your mouthpiece. And 
God, I pray that you'll just send revival, Lord, not only in Haynes Flat Baptist Church, individual body, Lord, but also, uh, Lord, that you'll just be with everybody in our community and other churches. God, I know when others are struggling, those are having difficult times and a lot of things going on in people's lives that, that only you know about. God, I just pray that you'll just show up and show out here this morning that we'll know we've truly been in the presence of the Lord. And I just pray if someone needs to be saved, today can be that day of salvation or someone needs to rededicate their life, they can do so or join the church, whatever it may be, God, that this will be the time that they can uh, just repent and turn to you. God, I love you and I praise you. I can't thank you for enough for what you're going to do and continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning. Good morning. If everybody would stand and grab a red hymnal, we're going to turn to page 485 and sing Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Page 485. to your neighbor. Page 469.
please, this is rough. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Miss Emily. Very beautiful job, like always. Praise the Lord for that. We can relate to a lot of what she was talking about and singing about. I'm praising his holy name this morning. So we're going to be in Luke chapter 22 this morning. Luke chapter 22. I know, I'm out of the camera for a second. <laughs> Great job, Miss Emily. Praise the Lord for that. Luke chapter 22 is where we're going to be. very familiar passage of scripture uh, that we're going to be looking at um, uh, in Luke chapter 22. It's found in all four gospels, the story, and it gives you in-depth information in each gospel. Um, I encourage you to parallel your, your gospel studies uh, when you look at uh, scripture sometimes and look at each, each author brings out different things and uh, just pray that uh, you can let the true author speak to you this morning. Uh, so if you're in Luke chapter 22, say amen. amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you. We praise you. I just pray that your spirit continue to lead here this morning. Lord, if someone don't know you from the free pardon of sin, don't know you as Lord and Savior, today can be that day. Or if someone's drawn cold or weary or uh, just would be honest, Lord, they've just been uh, not where they need to be, prioritized. We're, we're walking with you and talking with you. And just pray right now that you use me as your messenger, mouthpiece this morning. Lord, have your way uh, with all that's said and done. Just allow me to have boldness and clarity and confidence just to proclaim the gospel uh, like none other. Lord, allow us to not be ashamed of it because you're not ashamed of us. Lord, have your way with it all. Lord, we love you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title this morning is, Are We Sleeping on the Job? Are We Sleeping on the Job? And you're probably thinking, well, that's not really a job. It's a calling. Uh, I could have said, Are We Sleeping on the Job? And you may, some of you may have got that and say some of you may not. But uh, uh, are we sleeping on the job? And we're going to be looking at uh, Jesus praying uh, into the Garden of Gethsemane as the Mount of Olives is where we're going to be looking at this morning. And don't close your mind. Don't close your hearts. Don't start wondering and say, oh, I've heard this story a hundred times. No, we're going to look at God's Word and look at it. And we're going to look at some, we're going to start before and carry on just a little bit after that, the way God has led this week. Um, I want you to think about how your relationship with Jesus Christ is, is today. Not how it was 20 years ago. Not how it was a few months ago. Not, not how it was a few weeks ago. How is it today? How is it today? Are you on fire for the Lord? Are you serving and praising Him? Or are we sleeping on the job? Are we just kind of got complacent and comfortable in not doing anything that we need to be doing for the Lord? And... And I, and I appreciate Emily's honesty uh, during her song. She said she probably picked up her Bible like three times during the quarantine. A few weeks ago, I asked how many of you had, had been reading more since the quarantine, and there were a handful, and I was in the category that I had been reading less, and the pastor should be reading more for during that. But I, it was just affecting everybody a different way, so I appreciate that honesty. Um, Paul, uh, Jesus is talking. They had just finished the, uh, the Lord's Supper. And in verse 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. A lot of times people read God's word. And, and I, I talked to somebody this week and I said, I have been camping in the gospels in this story. And I have been reading them and reading them and reading them. Um, I should have brought my stack of all the different Bibles and all the different commentaries that I've looked at this. I looked like this coming in this morning because I was bringing them back in because I took them back and looked at them again last night and early this morning as well. And um, it's, it's, it's ironic because the, the questions I have, uh, the commentary is like, well, we don't really have an answer for that. So I've got that big book and it don't answer it. And so that kind of happens that way. Uh, but look what he says in verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Who was Jesus really talking to? Who do we know his name as? Peter. Why did Jesus call him Simon, Simon? Do you think Peter liked that name? That's who he was previously. 
That's who he was before he really started. It's who he was known as before he started really following Jesus. And so he gets his attention. I like that. Simon, Simon, behold. Listen to me. Pay attention to me. So he singles him out to amongst the disciples in this crowd at this time. And he tells him, Simon, Simon, you know what? Before you were saved, you didn't like the old name. You didn't like the old person, did you? You don't want that reputation that you had before. You want to have a new uh, reputation, a new witness, a new testimony. And so he comes here and he says, Behold, listen to me, Satan hath desired to have you, and he may sift you as wheat. Um, he's talking about, he's saying this is powerful. Um, there's a lot of things, a lot of questions that people have that this verse is not really clarifying a lot of things. We know that Job uh, was... Um, was tested and, 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 and he, he went through a lot of trials and tribulations at the very end he, he never denied his God and um, that's something that he tells us behold listen Satan hath desired to have you that you may sift you as wheat um, I had to look that up and figure out what sifting wheat was back then what they had is they had a bunch of wheat fields and they would lay wheat out and a lot of times what it would do is they would, they would just stomp all around them and then they would have to come up and they would pull up the wheat stalks and then they would gather up the wheat that had been stomped off and then they would sift them through until they could find the good stuff. You know what? Sometimes in life we get stomped on and beat up and banged up and we have to be sifted sometimes to see where our faith lies. And some of us in here go through some heavy trials and tribulations, right? Some of us, our faith may be weak. We may go through some trying times in life and and uh, Jesus tells Simon, he tells him, Behold, the Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. He, and not only is he talking about Peter, but he's also talking about his other followers. He's saying uh, the devil, is, is he is out there throwing all these different lures out there to kind of lure you in and get you sidetracked. It's so easy to get so, uh, so wrapped up in things of the world that we're not wrapped up in Jesus like we need to be. It's those distractions that take us away and take our focus off. How easy is that to happen? Very easy. Right? You get, you get for those that's got cell phones anymore, what do you do? You just sit there and you scroll. And you scroll. Are you looking at anything real positive? Probably not. Just killing time. Right? 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 A lot of times people uh, get out and just ride around. What are they doing? Just burning gas. So where are they going? I don't know. Or they, they got a plan on purpose? No, they're just riding around looking. Just wasting time. What should we be doing? Spending the time in God's word, reading it, studying to show ourselves approved. That when those trials and temptations come, we can be like Jesus and put scripture back at it and say, get behind thee, Satan. Don't, take, don't tempt the Lord thy God. I love verse 32. I don't think I've ever looked at it like this. Look at this. Verse 32. But I have prayed for who? Thee. Just stop right there. Jesus is telling Peter... Our Savior, the Messiah, the Son of God, I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you. And I have prayed for you. Now look what he says that he prays for. I wonder what that prayer looks like. How personal is that? How loving is that? We have a personal Savior that knows us personally, that he prays for us. He knows that Peter is going to fail him, which we're going to read here in just a few minutes. That thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You know what? We may be going through some sleepy times or some struggling times in life as Christians right now. But Jesus tells Peter, he says, I'm praying for you. You are going to fail me. We are going to fall. We're not perfect. Right? You may fall yesterday. You may have failed yesterday. You may fall today somehow. You may fall tomorrow. Who knows? You may be tempted with something and you give in to sin. You may fall. It, it, prayerfully, it's not too bad to where it scars you up and marks you up and ruins your reputation. Who knows? That's where grace and mercy and love and forgiveness comes in. But Jesus comes to this point and he says, this converted is not really meaning the same word as converted as like salvation. It actually means you have repented. You have returned back to me. That's what that word uh, converted means in the scripture here uh, in verse 32. It says, and when you are converted, you are repentant, you return, you turn back again to worship me and have true obedience. That's what that definition means. What is the importance of verse 32 that he says, when you return back to me after you have failed, which we denied him three times in the, in the rooster's crow, when you fail me, what is his call to do? Look at the last part of verse 32. What does it say? Strengthen thy brethren. When you hit rock bottom and God is there to pick you up, 
What are you doing to help other people that's hit rock bottom too? Pick them up, encourage them. Brother Chris taught this morning in Sunday school to praise other people, encourage people, lift each other up. There's too much discouraging going on. Can you imagine that God is using me, he's using you to help somebody else make it. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. It's so easy for us to do that and just say, well, I'm quit. I tried. It didn't work. But Jesus says, you are going to be the one. Peter was the, the main. He's always listed first, the disciple. He was kind of the spokesman for the disciples. Um, he's kind of looked at as the leader. Um, and he says, you are going to fail me. You're going to deny me three times. And here he says, um, I like this, that we see this dialogue between uh, Peter and Jesus in verse 33. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. If I were to ask you this morning, how much faith do you have in the Lord Jesus Christ? How strong is your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ? It, it, sometimes we talk a big talk. Or we think we're okay. But when those trials come and those test things, and when you fall, and sometimes you may fall hard, where do you really turn to? Who do you really turn to? How much faith do we have? The Bible says the faith of grain of mustard seed can move mountains. How, much, how, how, how strong is our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? All that time. Well, sometimes we may put our faith on our shoulders and get our, get our feelings hurt and just be easily ready to quit. So, and, and I like this, that Jesus answers Peter's reply and, the, and Peter says nothing. And then Jesus is going to speak to the other disciples. And Jesus has kind of already called Peter out. And no other disciples kind of ask anything. They just listen. And so sometimes uh, we need to realize that the Lord is paying attention to where we're at in a relationship with following him. And our, we may think we're in better shape spiritually than we are. And we really are missing the mark. And so we need to study to show ourselves rightly approving uh, before the Lord. And it says... In verse 34, Jesus said unto him, and he said, I tell thee, Peter, the, the cock, talking about the rooster, shall not, uh, not crow this day before that shalt thrice deny uh, that thou knowest me. And so he's going to deny him three times, which we know, uh, which is coming up soon when Jesus is arrested and took um, before trial there. And he's seen outside of where Jesus was taken. He was denying him and denied him and denied him. They heard the rooster crow. And, and then it talks about Jesus. And then Luke's account, it tells that Jesus looked at Peter and Peter did what? Wept bitterly. You know what? That's where true converted comes from. That's what true repentance looks like. When you finally say, Lord, I know I'm not perfect. <laughs> and you are. And I can't do nothing but fall and make a mess of what I've got. But you can make everything right. That's beautiful. That's where Peter was. And they see this in the little early stages of that. And so, as we look in verse 35, he says, And he saith unto them, When I sent you out without purse and without script and with shoes, lacked you anything. And they said nothing. Um, he's telling them, I sent you out before, and uh, I protected you. I, I, you were going out speaking for me, and you didn't have any issues. You didn't have to worry about where you were going, where you were staying. You didn't have to carry money. Didn't have to carry, uh, you didn't have to carry any kind of weapons with you or anything along those lines. He says, uh, verse 36, Then saith unto them, But now you hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. And they say it, and I say unto you, in verse 37, that it is written must be accomplished in me, and he that is reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end. What he's saying, he says, the good times has come to an end. We're getting ready to see persecution and persecution and persecution. It's getting ready to get tough. It's getting ready to get hard. So Jesus knew that his time was at hand. He was getting ready to be delivered over. His disciples are with him. Uh, he goes down to the foot of the Mount of Olives, which is, man, a beautiful picture in itself. If you study that out and look at it, it's called the Garden of Gethsemane. It's kind of like the bottom of, of the Mount of Olives where he is. That's where he uh, ascended into heaven. This is kind of his place to go to. You know what? It's a, it's a beautiful picture in itself because they think it's the Passion Week and they were just kind of camping out. This is their camping spot. That's kind of where they went to uh, to sleep and stay. And other folks may have been around that area as well. So that's how Judas knew that's where they were at. He, it was a very familiar area. Uh, probably in some olive groves is why we, we call it. Uh, that's what uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, the olive trees and all that things. The word olive means peace. 
And uh, man, it's a beautiful picture. Like I said, they study it out, look into it, it's beautiful. Um, so here they are, they are at this point. He says, um, and he asked them in verse 38, and they said, Lord, behold, uh, here are two swords. And he saith unto them, it is enough. Why do you think they looked around and said, we got two swords? And Jesus says, it is enough. Was Jesus talking about fighting physically? You're going to have to take up arms and fight physically? Or was he talking spiritually too? Jesus said, it's enough. You know what we have to do? We sung the songs. Man and I didn't even talk about really much about what we're singing. She sung about putting on the armor of God. What is the only armor as Christians in the armor of God in Scripture? What do we have? That's a sword. What's he talking about? His word. And it cuts two, it two, cuts two ways, right? And so uh, Jesus is telling his disciples, it's time behold, he says, you're going to have to have all these things. Hard times are coming. And they kind of miss the mark a little bit. Because they did was heard, you need to go out and buy you some swords. I believe they, I believe they were probably a, a, a lot like people that like guns, right? He said, this would have been in our day and age. He said, you need to go out and buy you some more guns, right? Some of you folks that buy a lot of guns and things would be like, oh yeah, this is what the Bible says. Preacher just said it this morning. We need to go out and buy more. We missed the mark. We need to fight spiritual war with spiritual war. And so this is where he's talking about it is enough. In verse 39, and he came out and he went, and as he wont, uh, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that you enter not into temptation. Pray that you enter not into temptation. In verse 39, um, here we can see, if you look at Matthew's account, Matthew talks about the three disciples as Jesus kind of uh, pulls them aside. It's actually Peter and the sons of Zebedee, which is James and John. He kind of pulls them aside personally and kind of talks to them a little bit more. And he actually says that he prays um, a first hour, and then he comes back a second time, and he comes back a third time. That's found in Matthew and Mark's account. Um, and so we can look at the, the kind of differences. And Jesus is saying that pray that you enter not into temptation. Uh, this is a, a temptation um, that... It's when our faith is tried and when we're struggling, and sometimes that sin overcomes and we give into it. And, and and not only that, is Jesus saying, pray that you can stay awake and see what's going on. Don't sleep. Don't fall asleep on on what's going on. And so he tells us in verse forty, pray ye enter not into temptation. And when he had withdrawn from them about us, cast stone or stones cast and kneeled down and prayed. This is what he said. Verse 42, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. We see the obedience of Jesus Christ to the Father. What was getting ready to happen? He was getting ready to be arrested, beaten, and beaten, and mocked, and crucified on the cross for the sins of the world. And he says, what? If it's your will, let this cup pass from me. How much agony, how much... Uh, turmoil was Jesus in. Uh, we, we can talk about that in the Matthew's accounts. He said he was in great agony. He was in great distress. And he was praying unto the Father. If this cup be willing, it wasn't just like as we read that. Um, it was just something so easily said, well, if this be willfully done. No, he realized that it was coming to a close. It was coming to an end. That he was getting ready uh, to be willing to be that sinless uh, sacrifice for me and you. I love verse 43. Look at verse 43. And there appeared an angel unto him... From heaven, strengthening him. Why? Why did Jesus need an angel to help strengthen him when he had his disciples and followers right beside him? Why did God send an angel? They were lacking a little bit, wouldn't they? You know what? I think it's a beautiful picture. And you think about this and look at this. I think it's beautiful to me that, that if God can send an angel to take care of Jesus and strengthen him, and he was in great agony and great distress, that it was beyond our control, beyond our power, that he says he will come to us. He will come to me and he will come to you. He will help you in a time of need. He will come to you. The Holy Spirit will enter. enter uh, they will... Um, that, that he will know if we don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit will pray for us in the groanings of our spirit. I, taught, I read a scripture this week too that says that uh, it's what it says in John 14 is I will come to you. I will not leave you uh, comfortless. And so whenever we, if we were like Jesus in a, in a great dire way, 
He will come to us and send us that extra encouragement we need if we'll trust him and follow him. That's a beautiful picture. But the disciples were missing it a little bit. They didn't understand. They couldn't comprehend. They were tired. They had lost their focus. Their faith was kind of weak. And so they were, it was later in the night. It was close to midnight, as we know other accounts of Scripture uh, tells us. So uh, it's way past my bedtime if it's midnight. And I get plum loopy, loopy after 8 o'clock. I used to always tell Amanda we couldn't have personal, we couldn't have serious conversations after 8 o'clock because I didn't really know what I was saying or how I could comprehend things. So it, men, if, or if you want to use that, that's, that's a pretty good thing to use, right? If your bedtime's 8 o'clock, 8, 30, 9 o'clock, you, just, you can take that from the preacher, right? So Travis, he encourages that. So, But uh, look what happens. They're tired. They're weak. They're wore down. They think things are okay. They've not seen everything uh, that's coming up. They don't know the bad thing is just around the corner. If you'd have thought about back in January what has happened since January or February of this year, Wow. Was we prepared? Are you, were you prepared for COVID-19, the pandemic? Were you prepared for all that's taking place? Right? Nobody is. Nobody was. Life can change just like that. You can get a phone call. Totally change our society, change our world, change our nation. I'll be honest with you. What would happen if the COVID-19 struck the president and his wife uh, so bad that they died? Then what? That's just a question mark. So we need to pray. That could totally change our outlook on things. Not only politician-wise, but then what? There's just a lot of things out there. And so pray that you enter not into temptation. Uh, not thy will, but thine. He was willing to... Uh, 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 then it says in verse 44, after the angel come from heaven and strengthened him, and it says, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat, he was praying and sweating. Uh, not only was it said it was his great drops of blood falling down to the ground. If you've ever had an injury or seen an injury on, on somebody's head in this area here, it will just pour blood. Just It's just a lot, a lot of soft areas and that. And it looks a thousand times worse than what it is. But it's like the sweat and everything else will just, uh, and it just runs off and drips. You ever see somebody bust their head open, you'll understand that. That's what uh, the Luke is writing about here that the disciples were trying to explain that it was as if it was just running off. He was just in agony and pouring out his heart to the Heavenly Father. Is our prayer life like that? Right? Let me ask you this. When you get on your knees and you pray, I would get down there, but I'd be out of the picture. But when you get on your knees and pray, is it more serious to you or is it just for show? And after a while, your knees, knees get hurting pretty bad, right? A lot of times people, we need to get serious about a prayer life. We need to get serious about our relationship with the Lord and quit sleeping on the job and not be more concerned about getting rest instead of uh, turning to the one that's creator of it all. And, and so as he prayed, he was just crying out to his heart to the Father. And it, it talks about, like I said, in the, in the Matthew and Mark accounts, he returned multiple times. He told them they were asleep. Just go ahead and sleep. You've already gave over to that temptation of tiredness and weakness, and you've gave over uh, to that fail. Uh, you've already failed uh, what he had asked you to do. Verse 45, and he rose up from prayer, and he came to his disciples, and he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Why are we sleeping for the, on, the, on the job of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do we need our sleep? How many hours? How, let me ask you this. How many of you need more than eight hours of sleep at night to really function? Let's see those. Oh, my word. Oh, I got some half-handers out there. Come on. If you need more than eight hours, right? All right. There you go. Be honest about it. Need more than eight hours. I'm waiting on one more. Okay. I got one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, how many of you like me? You can go on about four hours of sleep. I know Darrell Overton. He can go on about two. Right? <laughs> no, not no more. <laughs> right? But these guys were tired. They didn't have automobiles. They didn't have a lot of... They walked everywhere they went. If you've ever looked at the geography of this, this area, it's not all flat. It's like this. You got hills and valleys and mountains, and, and it's late in the night. They've been walking and traveling and kind of been doing all these things for a long time. They were tired. But when Jesus had something so serious coming up, it's something so serious to him that they were missing it. 
They weren't ready. They were tired. They were sleeping. They were more concerned about their self than they was their Savior. And that's a very selfish mindset, but it's not no different than today. We're concerned more about ourselves than we are about other people. And, and so here he is. Jesus comes to him. He finds them. And he says, why are you sleeping? Question mark. Rise up and pray lest you enter into temptation. Help me pray for this situation. And while they spake, behold, a multitude um, that he was, uh, verse 47. Uh, and while he spake, behold, a multitude. And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before him and drew near unto Jesus uh, to kiss him. So at this time, here Jesus is, is knew that his time as he came. He's already prayed these multiple times. He's found his disciples asleep. And he goes, he tells them, wake up, pray. Uh, and he goes back and he prays more. Uh, wake up and pray. And he comes back. He says, wake up and pray. And he comes back a third time. It's, a, it's amazing that if you look in Matthew's account, uh, you see the three people that are named out. You have it happen three times. And you've got, so is there power in numbers? Yes, there is. There's a lot of history there and a lot of the things in Scripture uh, that we can look at. So Judas, Judas comes and betrays him. And when in verse 49, it says, When they which where he saw and followed him, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Question mark. And one, of the, and one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. I, brought, I got something up here. Don't scare nobody. Bubby just walked out. He'll see it. This is Bubby's sword. So you're missing it, Bub. So he drew the sword. Remember what they said? They had how many, two, how many swords did they say they had? They had two. And so the, Peter, we know, reaches and slices. It cuts off Malachus's ear. We learn the guy's name in, in the book of John. He gives it more details. Cuts his ear off. Jesus says, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 look what happens. Could you imagine that? Should we fight? Should we fight? What got the attentions of the disciples? The mob came to take away their Savior. When it gets so bad, and when the mob of the world or the evilness comes and takes away your Savior and takes your personal life and takes it such as you personally, then what are you going to do? Are you going to fight? Or are you just going to lay down and sleep? So here they says, and I love verse 51. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus, uh, thus far. And he touched his ear and he healed him. So we learn in different accounts of the gospel that, that Peter swiped his ears off. He probably didn't have a sword like this. It's probably a little dagger. This is just best I can come up with, okay? I just wanted to have fun behind the pulpit this morning and uh, make you stay awake, make sure I don't do crazy stuff up here. But Peter, was he aiming for his head? Was he trying to chop his head off? Was he trying to get his ear? I think it was a good thing that he missed wherever he was aiming and maybe just got the ear. If not, he could have killed a man, been one for murder, and changed total outlook because he acted before he listened to God. You ever think about that? He asked God, should we fight? And he didn't wait on an answer. He went ahead anyway. Do we ever do that? Do we ask God? Do we bring things before God? And we act thinking it's right. And then what happens? Makes a mess of the situation. But Jesus takes total control of that. And he takes and he says, no, whoa, whoa. whoa. Don't fight. Put, you, put down your weapons. We're, we're not going to do this. And he takes Malachus's ear and touches it and heals him. How do you think that impacted that man? He was coming to be a part of the crowd, part of the people to arrest Jesus. And he's, here he is, had his ear just cut off. He's probably pouring blood like what he was talking about earlier. And Jesus touches it and heals it just like that. He's been physically touched by Jesus Christ. And uh, it's a beautiful picture. And so sometimes when people are going through some difficult times in life, we're missing the main picture right in front of us. In verse 52, And the, Jesus said unto the chief priests and the captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, Be you out of it as a, as a, against a thief and with swords and staves. Why are you coming to me to arrest me in the middle of the night, about midnight? I was in the daily in the temple with you in the temple. You stretched forth no hands against me, but this was your hour in the power of darkness. He realized that they came to him uh, to arrest him in the middle of the night. Why is that? Because a lot of people were sleeping. And they came out up in the, in the groves, out up in the woods and found him. Up on the bottom of the Mount of Olives uh, to find him and arrest him. 
and they had their, their mob amongst them. And, and so I, I like this, that in different accounts you can find in, in Matthew's account that others, uh, they were scattered and, and fell apart. Mark's accounts uh, is that uh, one was, they were in their night clothes. They'd kind of, they'd bedded down for the night. And Mark's account says what? The one young disciple run around, run off naked, didn't have any clothes on. He just took off. They tried to get him in his night clothes, and he, he, and it says in the account of his scripture that he ran off uh, pretty much in his, in his night clothes, in his jammies, pretty much. Scared to death. When times come in our own personal life, and we get tested and tried, and tried how do we, do we respond? Are we ready to fight with God's word, the sword of the scripture, or are we ready just to run off? And so... We see this in verse 54. It says, They took him and they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. Did Peter go alone? Was it just Peter that followed the crowd? When you read the Gospels, look at the book of John. John says there's another. It was Peter and the other disciple. When you read the Gospel of John, who did, and he calls him the other disciple, he's usually talking about himself. Wow, I learned something this morning. Well, I'm telling you, when you look at it, it's beautiful. Who came to the tomb to find it empty? Peter and who? The other disciple, which we know is John. They seen him being arrested. They seen him. Peter couldn't enter in. John tells us in John's account that he had a, a good reputation with the, at, the, at the house and he was able to go in. John 18, don't just believe, pre preacher, read it, see it. He was able to go in and hear what was going on. Peter didn't have that good of a reputation. He was the one standing outside by the fire pits. And the young lady says, you were a follower of Jesus. He says, no, I wouldn't. Another one says, well, you were a part of them. No, I wouldn't. Another one says, uh, then he kind of gets called out again. Well, you were a part of following Jesus. No, I wouldn't. And the rooster crows three times. We know that story. Are we sleeping on the job? Folks, it's not a matter of how things are going to come and how bad it's going to get. But are we prepared for when the things in this world come at us unaware? You know what? When you're tired and you're sleepy and you're wore out and you're not thinking straight, you're going to do some crazy things. Peter just done some crazy stuff, right? Swiped off a guy's ear. They only had two swords, they said. So are we missing the main picture, which is Jesus Christ? Are we picking up the right sword and ready to fight the world that is getting ready to come before us. Do we see more and more of the world turning away from the Lord or turning to the Lord today? So I don't know where you're at in your walk of the Lord. I don't want you to be scattered or running scared to death. I want you to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and not be found sleeping on the job. But turn to him. We know that Peter denied him. We knew that he followed him. Uh, did he always do it right? No, he did not. But why was it important that when he repented and he turned back, that's what repent means, it's a military term, repent, go back the other way. He is there to strengthen the brethren, strengthen his other disciples, strengthen other people. You may be going through some difficult, difficult, difficult times in your life, but God may be using it for you to strengthen other brothers and sisters in Christ and other people around you. So, it's a, so I don't know where you're at in your relationship with the Lord. I don't know what's going on in your personal life. I don't know what's going on in your family's life, your friend's life, your other people's life that you're around. You may be going through some tough, tough times. But God may be using that to get glory for him. Just like the whole COVID-19 quarantine and having to do without church and putting church on Facebook and YouTube and out there, it's amazing. How many thousands upon people that can hear the gospel? How many people can, all the good that can come out of it instead of just looking at all the negative and the bad? So it's time to wake up. Rise up. Why are you sleeping? Rise up and pray lest you enter not into temptation. Don't give in to those temptations that causes us to fall and fail and go down the wrong road of sin, making the wrong decisions that will lead us in the path that's of unrighteousness, but we will be leading into the right path. So I don't know where you're at in your relationship with the Lord. I don't know what's on your heart this morning, but are you, are we sleeping on the job? Are we tired and we wore out and we're just putting Jesus on the back burner and he needs to be on the forefront because he took it all for me and you 
And he said what? The very first time we know it, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He loves us, he loves us, he loves us. Even when we're yet unlovable, he still died for me and he still died for you. Let's all stand to our feet this morning. Lord, we love you, we praise you. Just thank you for the sweet spirit we feel here this morning. I know there's folks in here struggling. I know there's folks that's maybe listening down in the cars or watching on YouTube or Facebook that maybe truly can relate that we're all going through some tough times and difficult times and it all comes when we're tired and not expecting it. It's just a, it's an emergency. And Lord, our country and our, our churches and our communities and our Christian brothers and sisters are in, a, in a, an emergency state. God, that we need to be able to be able to be prepared when these trials and tests and these temptations come. That that evil is out there lurking. This evil is out there to uh, take and swallow up and devour. Not only as we read in scriptures the Peter and the other disciples, but also that evilness is there to lure us away from what is truth and what is the, the way and the life, and that's you. God, I pray if someone needs to be saved here today, can be that day of salvation, or someone may be honest about it and say, you know what, church, know what, no matter know, know what, preacher, my prayer life has uh, just fell, fell way short from any kind of uh, sweating or any kind of agony or, or just praying until we truly uh, know what your will is instead of thine. God, that we don't be like the others and just be scattered when people come and tough times come, that we can... We can be stuck, we can not be ashamed of the gospel and just stand boldly before the throne of God and hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. God, challenge us to be more Christ-like as we stand to give uh, account for you one of these days. Well, we love you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.